in the conversation around hormones, could it be possible that your brain is actually crashing your hormones? All right, we gotta break this down, guys, because everyone is running around trying to do all kinds of stuff for their hormones, right? But we're not really thinking about the brain. And I wanna spend the next three weeks, that's right, three weeks, I thought this was one video, but when I really looked at the content, it's actually three, maybe four, it might even be an entire book. But I wanna spend the next three weeks talking about this concept around our brains and our hormones, because currently we all think about it separately, right? You got a brain doctor, you got a hormone doctor, you've got this doctor, that doctor, and you're running around and it's not coming together. Well, we're gonna put these two ideas together in this video. This is part one. Here's what I want you to understand. In your brain, I want you to picture your brain, right? A beautiful organ allows you to do so much. In the middle of it, right behind your third eye, deep into the brain, sits an organ called the hypothalamus. Right under that hypothalamus hooked in is the pituitary gland, right? And these guys work together, the hypothalamus and the pituitary. They work together almost like your fin, right? Have you ever been to the beach and you see, you know, the fish sort of sensing the water, they're using their eyes, their fins, everything else. So your hypothalamus and pituitary, this sort of intrinsic system is working together to understand your environment. It's looking at everything from light and sound and temperature and even your feelings. In fact, the majority of emotions and memory are stored in the hypothalamus. Now what's happening though is the hypothalamus is the commander and it's telling the rest of the body what to do. So let's go back to your environment. Let's go back to the stress you might experience on any given day or go back to the fact that you might be cold or hungry or tired, whatever it might be. The hypothalamus and the pituitary are taking all of that in. And then the signaling begins, and here's what happens. The first thing that happens, and I'm gonna use a word that you guys already know, but I'm gonna use it again, is that your cortisol levels go up. It activates the HPA, or the hypothalamic pituitary axis. Sorry for all the big words, but it's important. So it activates that axis, cortisol levels go up, and that is being secreted from your adrenal gland, which sits down here. So we've got the brain now communicating with the adrenal gland, producing cortisol, body's alerted, time to fight, right? This is fight or flight time, we gotta go in, it's time for war. For a period of time, that's okay. But with chronic stress and chronic brain kind of inflammation, that high cortisol now impacts your hormones. So now you have shunting of progesterone because some progesterone is actually produced from the adrenal gland. So now progesterone levels are impacted. And as progesterone's impacted, your thyroid is impacted, right? Because progesterone and thyroid are kind of in a, sort of a symbiotic relationship a little bit. Then estrogen's impacted. So slowly, all the different hormones are getting involved because your brain is not super happy with the current environment. As this pattern continues, you start to see hormone patterns over a period of time. And what we're finding in both the science and the research, and even in the exam room, is that many of these early inflammatory symptoms, right? Sort of this humming is probably the best way to describe it, of an inflamed brain are present way before you have any kind of detectable hormone shift. So we might be thinking about all of this wrong. We might be thinking about your hormones way too late in the game when we should actually be thinking about your brain. As the cycle continues, the sort of low-grade humming inflammation progresses, then we start to see the classic patterns of hormone disruption, which for me in the exam room looking at labs, right, is hypothyroidism, low progesterone, estrogen dominance, insulin resistance, high cortisol and adrenal fatigue, and we're always trying to unwind this web of hormones and trying to help a patient like you with where to begin and where to start. I'm really understanding the longer I do this that that's very late. We need to be starting really early with our youngest girls, right, even our boys, and helping them understand what the brain is doing to prevent this crash of hormones down the road. Now, as you're sitting here watching this, you're like, well, how do I know if I'm in this pattern? Many of the symptoms are there right from the get-go. Trouble sleeping, staying on our phones or computers for excessive amounts of time, right? 
not getting deep REM sleep or deep sleep. These are all early precursors to this idea that the brain is then in turn gonna crash your hormones. Not eating consistently, so having blood sugar levels that are all over the place, so feeling hungry a lot or feeling over full, doing too much fasting, these are all sort of setting the stage for a potential hormone crash down the road. Not managing stress, right? Like not understanding that we need time out. We need two to three hours a week for personal care and self-care to de-stress, time to be in nature. All of that is impacting what your brain is processing from the environment and then in turn, ultimately crashing your hormones. So as you're thinking through this idea, understand that your environment, what you are thinking, what you are feeling, what you're perceiving, even what you're eating, drinking, sleeping, your relationships, all of them are directing your brain in terms of what to do with your hormones. This is so powerful because so often I've sat with patients and I'm like, we're doing everything, right? We're doing everything. They're, they're doing everything. You're doing everything. You're doing all the things. You've got the diet and you've got this and you've got that, but your environment hasn't changed. And whether it's a toxic relationship or a toxic work environment, or it's simply you pre-wired, maybe even intergenerationally for negativity, that in turn is driving what's ultimately gonna happen with your hormones. So when we're talking about hormones, right, and we're digging in to solving hormonal issues, and we're thinking about it even on a grander or broader scale with what's going on hormonally with our young children, our teenagers, or even with you know our adolescents, all of them, then we have to understand that our environment plays a critical role in feeding information to this command center that sits deep within our brains and tells the rest of the organs exactly what to do. All right, I'm gonna let you sit with that idea because it's a deeper one, right? We're talking about the hypothalamus, we're talking about the pituitary, we're talking about this connection to the adrenals and to all the end organs that produce your hormones and how your environment might be impacting that way before, 15, 20 years before, you actually see even one hormone symptom. All right, in my next video, we're gonna break down this idea a little bit more. Don't forget, I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.